Hey everyone, it's Colt, and today we're joined by Jessica McElroy. I'll let her introduce herself, she'll do a much better job than I will, uh, but basically the ideal candidate to talk to us and to talk to anybody who is wanting to learn web development and break into the industry. Uh, she has a pretty interesting journey and things, it, at least uh, from where I stand, things have worked out pretty well. Uh, and uh, yeah, she, she has a lot to share with us. Where are you joining us from today? I'm based in Oakland, California. Um, I live in a little neighborhood called Rockridge, um, and I've been in the Bay Area for about eight years now. And um, like five or six of those, I've been working as a software developer. You're a developer now, but was that always your, I won't say your dream, but was that something you had you know, planned out from early on uh, or was that just an unexpected twist in your your career? Definitely an unexpected twist. Um, in college I studied sociology and policy studies uh, at Rice University. Going into college I didn't know that uh, about programming even as a concept. Um, didn't know anything about computer science. It was just not something that was on my radar. Um, as a kid I had dabbled in HTML and CSS because I wanted to make uh, fan sites for my favorite bands, <laughs> but that was the extent of uh, my programming awareness. Um, but uh, yeah, in college, I I met some folks who were studying computer science, and um, you know they they did all kinds of like little side projects and stuff, and um, it seemed like they really loved what they were doing, and like you know programming could be this very fun and powerful tool. So that's where I first became aware of it. Um, but uh, yeah, after college, I, I actually um, went on to work for a, pol a public policy research firm here in Oakland. That's what brought me out to the Bay Area. And, um, you know, the idea of programming, you know, based on my exposure from my computer science uh, major friends um, was still kind of in the back of my head. And um, I started to uh, teach myself some Python uh, out just in my free time um, based with you know online classes and I was having so much fun with that that I left that first job out of college and went on uh, to to do a coding boot camp to make the full time make it make a full switch towards software engineering before the the boot camp you said you you were doing some self learning and trying to pick up Python w was that through books or online courses or you know blogs? How are you doing that? Yeah, um, well, I started with just, um, I think the first thing I used was uh, an on, a free online book called How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. Um, a, you know, learning programming with Python, it's for, you know, people who are just, like, who are looking to program for the very first time. And um, I, um, but then, you know, being in the Bay Area, like, there were, so many different uh, resources like for learning um, for learning in person too like I found these meetup groups like uh, women who code um, and girl develop it that hosted uh, evening and weekend workshops um, and I started just signing up for all of them um, <laughs> I think girl develop it in particular was really good they had um, all kinds of uh, intro to web development classes uh, and also uh, Python classes. Then through those meetup groups and workshops, I ended up uh, meeting a bunch of folks who had done coding boot camps, um, and that's what convinced me to kind of take the jump. Was it more of, uh, you know, I guess unhappiness with the the policy career, or was it uh, just something that you accidentally realized you really enjoyed doing with programming? Was it about, you know, a, a career trajectory that seemed more stable? Like, was there, you know, one thing in particular that drew you towards it? Working in that public policy research firm, it was uh, kind of my dream job in a way. Having studied sociology and policy, it was um, <clears throat> squarely in uh, my interests. Uh, but I did feel like um, the, the even though there was uh, the, the work felt really meaningful. The actual day-to-day -day tasks that I was doing weren't very engaging um, until I was put on a project actually where they, um, I got to do a little bit of programming. 
Uh, they oh. needed someone to run some basic uh, statistical analysis, uh, you know, just generating some descriptive statistics of the data set using this data. And, uh, you know, it forced me to, I had already knew like a little bit of Python for my self-study and, uh, and, you know, so learning Stata wasn't too intimidating uh, and I really just needed to do some basic things, but um, I found that to be so much more exciting and rewarding than like the other tasks on my plate that I was just like, I need, I want to do more of this. And um, I, I found that, uh, you know, it was exciting, it was rewarding, and it kind of put me in that sort of flow state. I found that I was drawn to programming in a way that I wasn't um, with like the other the other things that made up my job. <laughs> I mean, even for the, the best of jobs, there's many, many times in a given day where you're not actually doing the stuff that you, you enjoy. Um, but that, that's interesting though. So many of the people I talk to, you know, change careers because they're like completely unhappy with what they were doing or, you know, they want, uh, you know, a higher base pay or whatever it is. There's there's some sense of or like a source of unhappiness with the original job. Sounds like this was just an accidental thing that you really fell in love with or realized that you enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, it was more like I was going toward something that appealed to me rather than running away from something that I didn't like. Um, I think, you know, in my alternate life where I stayed at that research firm, I that would have been a fine trajectory too. Um, uh, you know, I think there's definitely a lot of benefits to being in software development. The pay is very high. I've easily more than doubled my salary when I switched. Um, and, um, you know, there's definitely a lot more uh, flexibility in terms of working hours and locations. When you started to, to think about attending a boot camp, mm -hmm. was it um, a complicated process, of, you know, looking at different boot camps and comparing them and applying? Or was there one that you knew you wanted to go to? How did you do that? How'd you figure out, you know, where to apply? Yeah, um, at the time there wasn't uh, nearly the same uh, quantity of boot camps as there are now. Uh, there's been a proliferation, I think. Um, uh, but at the time, like I knew that I wanted to attend an in-person boot camp, um, and so I was looking for ones in my area in San Francisco or um, the East Bay, and I found a couple. I think uh, the choices were. App Academy, Hack Reactor, and Hackbright. But I, I really zeroed in on Hackbright because it was the only uh, women-specific boot camp. Um, and I had uh, met a number of people who had completed it and they raved about how the community was just very supportive and tight-knit. Uh, and that, that just really appealed to me because I knew that it was going to be a challenging journey and that um, the community and the network is uh, probably the most important aspect of uh, making a, a successful career change. And sure enough, that it did play out that way. I, you know, I, um, I found uh, the Hackbright network to be incredibly important when I was uh, looking for my first job, and um, I've actually stayed in touch with a lot of the uh, the people that I in my cohort, and we've, you know. Uh, I mean, in fact, the last two jobs I've gotten were through Hackbright connections. Real world skills and having that experience uh, makes it easier and you feel like you don't have to prepare for, for interviews going forward. Um, one way a lot of students like or try to demonstrate that experience is by building a project. Mm -hmm. And you talked briefly about your project. Uh, can you explain, I guess, you know, what it was, but also do you think that project helped you uh, early on? both in terms of learning, but also in getting that first job. Yes, 100%. Um, I, um, we we're talking about my the Hackbright project, right? The second half of Hackbright was focused on a project. Yeah, so that was um, a, a really transformative learning experience. I was, um, my, the app that I built was, uh, it was like Craigslist, but specifically for bikes. Um, and the reason I did that was because um, I, right before Hackbrite started, I had uh, my bike was stolen out of my backyard, <laughs> and um, and then you know I was trolling Craigslist after that, like seeing if my bike would pop up, and also kind of looking for a new bike, um, but then feeling worried that um, you know if I'm if I were going to buy a bike on Craigslist, that maybe it would be stolen too, and I'd be contributing to that cycle of bike theft. Um, so I decided to build um, a marketplace for used bikes 
that integrated with um, a bike registry. Uh, and this bike registry site had an API, actually, uh, it was called Bike Index. And um, you could use their API um, to uh, check a bike serial number and see if it had ever been reported as stolen. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, basically my, this marketplace that I built would prevent any stolen bikes from being listed so that like a, um, when you're shopping for bikes, you can do it with confidence that um, you know, the, the seller is legit. It was super fun because I, mean, I really started from scratch. You know, of course, I, I used the technologies that Hackbright had taught us, um, Python and Flask on the back end, and then I did just pure JavaScript on the front end. Uh, and I, I think I maybe incorporated a little backbone later, but um, it was mostly just doing vanilla JS. And um, it was an incredible learning experience because it was purely self-driven. Um, like I just, I was just obsessed with making this app as kind of realistic as possible, <laughs> and um, and I continuously like had ideas for like new features I wanted to add and. Um, new integrations I wanted to do, like you know, Facebook login, or um, you know, adding uh, or you know, integrating with that API. Just all kinds of like you know, little enhancements, and um, and yeah, I think learning how to build a full stack app from scratch is like a huge confidence booster because once you've done it once, um, you're so prepared to like you know, go into um, go into your first job and uh, and kind of make connections like you know looking at how um, you know a, a company's code base is structured you you see um, you're able to understand all the pieces you can be like oh this um, you know this framework is kind of like flask or um, you know oh right. instead of SQLite they're using <laughs> they're using MySQL um, so by learning all of those pieces and seeing how they fit together um, you have a really good foundation for going into any production code base and being able to figure it out it also just gave me something to talk about in interviews which I think is very valuable um, something that I was excited to talk about and, and you know employers that I was interviewing with could see that enthusiasm and um, and you know, see how those skills would be transferable to what they needed me to do. So, yeah, I'm a huge advocate for focusing on on projects. It's, um, I think it's uh, letting your curiosity drive your learning is probably uh, the most powerful way to to learn. That sounds like a really interesting project. Um, although you're going to concern some of my students because I tell them they don't have to come up with something you know, completely novel uh, okay. to still get the benefits. And here oh, you no, are inventing some, some new uh, interesting <laughs> project with, with uh, the bike registry and all of that. Um, I, I'm kind of- You're just but, a Craigslist clone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I see a lot of students get like very paralyzed because they can't come up with some amazing idea. Yeah, and you know, I've struggled with that too. And, but honestly, like, um, you know, uh, since then, I've never come up with anything all that novel. Uh, like for side projects, like if I want to learn a new language or framework, I'll just um, clone an app that I already use. Um, like, you know, clone Instagram or clone uh, Pocket, which is what I use for saving, you know, articles or, um, you know, rebuild Reddit. I think it's incredibly in, uh, educational to try to reverse engineer something that like you already use and love.